All right, so problem eight, we got, the, we have this function and we're given, um, we're, we're given the second derivative of f. Actually. We're given the second derivative of f and we have to find the function. Let's see which of these graphs could actually be the function of f when you're given that this is the second derivative. And so the key here is to recognize where the second derivative is positive and where it's negative. So over here it's positive, over here it's positive, and in the middle section here, it's negative. I'll write negative. Now, when the second derivative is positive, that tells you that, that, the, that the graph of, of f is concave up. When the second derivative is negative, that tells you the graph is concave down. So concave up here, here, and here. So you wanna look for a graph essentially where it's concave up, to the right and left of one and negative one, or about like one and negative one, and where it's concave down and the, between there. So you wanna see like a graph maybe that kind of goes, does something like this. Down, then up again. Again, we don't know if it could maybe go lower, or could it go higher, but you wanna have something that changes direction three times. So this first one wouldn't be the graph because it's only concave, it's concave down here and concave up here. So this one definitely is not the graph. For B, it's concave up here, it's concave down here. So it's like the opposite of this, so this still is not the graph. Now it looks like our graph is either gonna be C or D because we have concave down. It looks like it's, con so it's concave down here, concave up here, and then concave down here. But we actually want it the other way around. We want it to be concave down in the middle. It's concave up here. So it's not that. So it's probably, it's gonna look like it's gonna be D. Yeah, cause this is concave down, concave up, and concave up. So the answer is D. All right, number nine. All right, number nine. Um, you, you, if this is a problem to kind of test that you can recognize is this is the formal like definition of the derivative. If you remember, like when you first started learning about derivatives, you learned about how you took the limit of the secant line as it got very, very close to the like, um, to the, to the, to the tangent line. So, so to remember that you were basically finding that the, that the points became very, very close to each other. Um, Anyways, the point is that you don't want to fall into the you don't want to fall into the trap where you where you try to do some algebra calculation or anything. You, you don't want you don't don't try to do some algebra or like some trickery to to um you know cancel something out. Here you're simply just going to recognize oh this is the derivative of the natural log of x. Or you can say usually it's we usually will be defined as the natural log of the absolute value of x. In either case, um, the derivative would simply be one over x. Now it's saying when x equals two, what's what's this equal to? So it's basically saying evaluate the derivative when x equals two or when x equals two e. So then your answer will just be one over two e. So the answer will be a. All right, 10, you're given the derivative and you're told to find the third derivative when x is two. So all you have to do is take the second derivative and then take the third derivative and plug in x equals two into that. So let's take the derivative of the derivative, which is the second derivative with respect to x, which will be four x cubed minus six x squared plus three. Then we take the derivative again. And this will be 12x squared minus 12x. And then we just, we just evaluate this for x equals 2. So you get 12 times 24, or no, 12 times 4, minus 12 times 2. So you get 48 minus 24, and you'll get 24. And your answer will be B.
All right, number 11, we have um, the function um, that's going to be, this is a basically a piecewise function. So if you remember what these look like, um, you basically want to, you have to, you basically have to graph the, the corresponding expression on the, on these of these, on each of these intervals. We want to graph x squared to the left zero, not including zero. So we're going to have an open circle of zero. We're going to, x will be negative, or y will be negative one when x is zero. So we'll have a point of negative one. And then we're going to graph x, the line y equals x when x is to the right of zero. And this is y equals x squared. Okay, so we want to find the, the integral from negative one to one of f of x. So essentially, you want to find the area between this function from negative one, positive one. So it's going to look something like this. This is going to intersect at one, one. So it'll actually be negative one, one, uh, same y value. So you want to find that area. Now, what you can do is you, you find the integral of this portion. So the, the integral from negative one to zero first of x squared. Then you add the integral from zero to one of the x function. So let's go ahead. This will be x cubed over three from negative, for negative one to zero. And then I'll be uh, that'll be zero, zero cubed minus negative one cubed, which will be, will be zero minus uh, negative one. So negative, negative, so positive one. Or sorry, positive one. I knew I saw funny. I saw something weird. Negative one cubed on top all over three. Forgot to forgot put, forgot to put the three in the, the denominator here. So you really have zero minus a negative one third. So you get one third. So one third is this area. Now this area, you can you can go ahead and evaluate this integral if you want, but this is just a triangle with a base of one and a height of one. So the area there would be one half base times height or one half one times one. So the area here would just be one half. And so the total area would just be one third plus one half. Using common denominators, you get two six plus three six, and then you get five six. So your answer is A. Number 12, we're given that 3x minus the tangent of y equals 4. Let's see y dx in terms of y. So we just find the derivative of this. Um, it's going to be kind of, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's technically called implicit differentiation. So, we'll, so we take the derivative of x like normal, it would just be three. And we take the derivative of y. So the derivative of the secant of y would be the secant squared of y. But here, we're gonna multiply by dy dx. And then we take the derivative of four, which will be zero. And then we're gonna essentially Solve for dy dx. So we're going to add, we're going to take away three, so you get negative three on the right, and we're going to divide by the negative secant squared of y. So this cancels, and you get dy dx. 
equals negative three. Now, the secant squared of y, remember secant is defined as, secant of y is the same as one over the cosine of y. So when you can rewrite this as basically negative, the negative cos, the negative one over the cosine squared of y. So go, rewriting it like this. And let's just cancel all these negatives right here to just not confuse us. So this will just be like one over the cosine squared of y. And then you could flip this over using because there are fractions three over one divided by one over the cosine squared of y. That would just be three times the cosine squared of y. Your answer will be, will be b. All right, 13, for time greater than or equal to one, the position of a particle moving along the x-axis is given by p of t equals the square root of t minus two. At what time t in the interval one to 16 is the instantaneous velocity of the particle equals the average velocity of the particle over the interval one to 16? Okay, so the instantaneous velocity is basically where you take the derivative of position. That's formally known as the derivative of position. So, we're going to find where, where the derivative of position is going to be equal to the average velocity, which is basically going to be, you're going to take the, the um, change in position over that interval. So you're kind of going to treat it like, um, like it's a slope that you kind of did in, in um, algebra. So average, so average velocity. From 1 to 16, it's essentially going to be p of 16 minus p of 1 over 16 minus 1. That's what you're doing. p of b minus p of a over b minus a. The average velocity would be 16 or the square root of 16 minus 2. So 4 minus 2. p of 1, so the square root of 1 minus 2. So negative one over 15. And you'll get three over 15 or one over five. So now we, so we wanna find when is the derivative equal to one fifth in this interval? So let's find the derivative of P of T. Remember that, that the square root of T is the same as T to the one half. So this is the same as p to the t, p of t is equal to t to the one half minus two. So then p prime of t will be one half t to the negative one half, which is the same as one over two times the square root of t. So we set this equal to that. So we're gonna set that equal to one fifth. And then we just solve for t here. So multiplying that by the square root of t, that by five. We'll get five over two is equal to the square root of t. Then you square both sides. And you get 25 over four is equal to t. All right, number 14, if f is a differentiable function and y of y is equal to the sine of f of x squared, what is dy dx when x equals three? Okay, so this is like chain rule. Well, this is chain rule. It's gonna be like chain rule, chain rule. It's, it's gonna be a function within a function. So let's take the derivative of this. So, so dy dx, Taking the derivative of the, of the innermost function would be the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Then you're going to multiply that by the by the next outside function, which is with, by f of x squared. So the derivative of f of x squared, you would just write as f prime of x squared. 
multiplied by the derivative of the sine of f of x squared, which will just be the cosine of f of x squared. Now, if we're gonna evaluate this when x is three, all you simply have to do is plug in three here. So you're gonna get two times three, six times f prime of three squared, which is nine times the cosine of f of three squared of f of nine. And this should be our answer. So the answer is D.